celebrate the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. <clears throat> if you're visiting with us, we're delighted to have you and hope you will come and visit with us again. As today is July 4th, we're going to start out just a little bit different. I know y'all will be tired of talking. We're going to do different stuff. We're going to do something just a little bit different. I invite you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> and the talk is not recorded. Um, you will have to sing the National Anthem without music. But I'm praying we have a strong voice in here that they won't be. <coughs> I pledge allegiance. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things that we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn again to your seat and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through our Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Forgive us in 
Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of his word. Good morning. Good morning. First reading is a reading from Ezekiel. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn, and I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, or they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 123, if we could just read this together. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our lives look to you, O Lord our God, until you show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. The second reading is a reading from 2 Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. 
Now Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that he has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he should, could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and he began to send them out two by two. And he, and he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, and but, to, and but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. And so they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and I invite the children to come up. Well, good morning, everyone. How are you this morning? I am so glad you're good. How many of you like fireworks? I'm glad for you. Remember to stay a safe distance from them, okay? This morning, I ask this question sometimes. How many of you have a tattoo? Come on, fess up. How many of you have a tattoo? I bet more of you have one than you think you do. Mm-hmm. You have one. When you were baptized, especially if you were baptized here, and I baptized you, when I got through baptizing you, I took some oil and I put a little cross right here on your forehead. Now, you probably don't remember that, but I did. What? You remember it? Yeah. So there's this little cross up here on your forehead, and I put it up there, and God can see it, but nobody else can see it. So you have this invisible tattoo, right? You've got this tattoo of a cross, and it reminds God that you are his child. Are you God's child? Yes. Are you God's child? Yes, we are God's children, and he looks down, and he sees all these little crosses, and he says, these are my children. These are, I, say, I love every one of them, even when they're not being lovable. I'm sure you're all the time lovable, right? Yeah, we don't ever do anything bad. Okay, I'll take your word for it. But even when we do things that we shouldn't do, or we don't do things we should, like clean our room, God still loves us. God always loves us. How about that? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that after service. Anything, but, but God loves us, and God takes care of us. God provides us parents who love us. And this morning, there's a set of parents that are going to bring their child up here, and we are going to baptize their child and then we are going to put a cross on her forehead so that God always remembers 
that we're his children, okay? So let's thank God for that. Dear God, thank you for making us your children and marking us so you remember. Always see the cross that's on our foreheads and help us to remember that you love us. Amen. And you can get your treat and you can head back off to your seat. Kind of chewy candy. It's got honey in it. It's called bit of honey. Yeah, cool. We'll take him one. It's a called bit of honey. It's got honey in it. It's chewy. This morning we begin with the prophet and God says, I'm sending you to people who may not hear you, who may be stubborn and they may not want to hear what you've got to say. We get to our gospel lesson and Jesus has gone home to his hometown and he's preaching in the synagogue, teaching in the synagogue and they're like, where did this guy get all this from? How does he do all this? Didn't he grow up around here? I remember when he was about this hot tall and da 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 and I remember his brothers and all this stuff and they're looking at him and they're going, hmm, how did this happen? And they can't believe it. They just can't take it in. I remember my first call right as I was going to leave. There was coming to town a new doctor. Well, he had grown up in the town. He was a grandson of one of the, the older ladies in town. And I said, oh, I feel for that little boy. because that, Well, he wasn't a little boy anymore. But I felt for this young man because I said, these people are going to go see him and they're going to go, I remember when you were little. I said, because we do. It doesn't matter how old some people get. We still remember what they were like when they were young. My secretary of that same congregation looked at me one day. We were talking about the, uh, one of the town cops because my son married his daughter, and we were talking about him. She said, you know, he was an obnoxious teenager. She said, he was a terror. And she stopped for a minute. She turned around and looked at me. She said, you know, he still is. Do we look at people and we still see them as those young, rebellious teenagers? Do we look at them and we can't see that they've matured and they've grown? Well, I think this is what happens in Jesus' hometown. He, they can't look past the little boy they knew to see the man that God has made him. And so he can't really do a whole lot in his hometown because they don't believe he's able to. They have no faith in him. So Jesus leaves there, and he teaches and preaches in other villages. He heals people, and he continues with his ministry. But his ministry is growing. By this point in Mark, he's, you know, the crowds are around him all the time. And so he begins to send his disciples out two by two. I always thought that's a neat way to send them out is two by two. How many of you like to do things alone? I have to tell you, I, I, I haven't met a widow yet that likes to eat by herself. Most of us hate to eat by ourselves. It's the loneliest time of the day. And it makes it so much easier if there's someone else there. You know, if you, have a, if you like to go walking, how much easier is it to get out of the house if you've got a walking buddy? How much easier is it to do something when there's more than one of you? 
Jesus knew this, and he sent the disciples out two by two so that they could support each other as they went on their way, as they ministered in the communities around them to people they didn't know. I've always been interested in that, that he sends them two by two. He sends them out. He empowers them to go, and they go. They go. They go, and they and they tell people to repent, and they heal people, and they do all these great and wonderful things, and they're excited by it. Now, did everybody that they talked to listen to them? I'm sure not. I'm sure there were people who were busy. There were people who really just didn't want to hear it. There were people who heard it, and like the people of Jesus' hometown, just couldn't believe it. There were those who didn't hear or wouldn't hear. And Jesus says, that's okay. He said, but as you leave the town, shake the dust off your shoes. Shake the dust off your feet. As a way of telling them, I'm done with you. That's it. You know, I'm not even taking your dust with me. As I think about this passage, I think about how God empowers each of us, and we talk about those God moments sometimes. This week I received a... Uh, story about a policeman and he's driving along and he sees this young man and if I ruin this story please forgive me he sees a young man who's hitchhiking with no shoes and it's hot and everything and he's worried about the guy hitchhiking he pulls over and he stops and he asks the boy if he needs a ride and of course the guy thinks well he's just going to harass me but he takes the young man to a store and gets him some sandals because that's what he wants and he's talking to him, and the guy is a drug addict. And he says, we have places that will help you with that. And he says, I'm not ready for it yet. And he says, okay, well, I work at the police station here. And when you are ready, let me know, and I will help you. I thought that was just a wonderful story of how people help each other. I see things like that. I guess because I'm looking for things like that. The way that we share God's love with one another. Even if we don't speak directly about God. The way that God in our lives, the way that the Holy Spirit moves each of us to do things that we might not normally do. I remember somebody telling me this. Well, I've done this a couple times. We were in the store one day, and there was this gentleman that pulls up behind me, and he's got one of those um, carts that you ride around the store, and he has got it full of groceries. And I turned around, and I said, do you need some help? And he said, that would be nice, but you don't have to. But so I started unloading his cart onto the conveyor belt. He thanked me. He thanked me to the point that it was really beginning to embarrass me because that's all he could say was thank you, thank you. He said, people just don't do this anymore. And I'm like, it's okay. I know how hard it is to reach those spots over here where, you know, you've got groceries. But I helped him and he kept thanking me and he kept thanking me. And I said, you know, those are one of those God moments. Those are one of those moments when we get to share with people and they realize that you've done something that normally people wouldn't do. Jesus sent them out two by two, just as he sends us out. Our prayer this morning says he sends us out in baptism. He anoints us in baptism. He calls us his children in baptism. And he empowers us with the Holy Spirit, that spirit that is with us each and every day. And sometimes we run across those moments when we can talk to people, and they're surprising moments. A lady was telling me about being at work, and one of the other ladies said, you go to church, right? And she said, yes. She said, well, so-and-so over there is looking for a church. And she said, I'll get fired if we talk religion at, church, at work. Coffee break comes, a young man comes over, and he sits down, and he says, I hear you go to church. Where do you go to church? God was working both ways here. She said the young man started coming to church. You know, but sometimes we get those moments. Sometimes God puts us in the places 
where we can share our faith. We can share God's love. We can share God's care. Those moments are, are wonderful moments, and they help us each and every day because not everybody is willing to listen to what we've got to say. Not everybody wants to hear that we go to this church or we do this or we do that. Not everybody wants to hear about God's love because there are people in the world who feel like they are not lovable. That's a hard thing for me to grasp sometimes, but I know that there are people who feel unlovable. They feel like they don't deserve to be loved. And if they don't deserve to be loved by a human, they definitely don't deserve to be loved by God. And yet God sends us out to these people. This morning we come here to worship. We gather here to worship. And God meets us in this place. God fills us with his love and his grace through word, through prayer, through song. God helps us by putting us in community by putting us in a community that cares about one another. God feeds us at his table, and he continues to fill us with that Holy Spirit, that spirit of power. In our first lesson this morning, it said the Spirit came to the person so hard that it made him go. God's Spirit comes to us, and it asks us, to go. It nudges us to go. It nudges us to share his word, his love, his grace each and every day. And some of us are a little nervous about that. I've all, I was told in seminary that the Lutherans love the kiss principle. Keep it silent. I won't tell you what the last word is. Stupid. Anyway, he says, you know, we go by that principle. We keep our faith to ourselves, but we shouldn't. Our faith is something we need to share. This morning, God comes to us. He gives us all we need, and he sends us out into a world. And if we can't go by ourselves, find a partner. Go two by two. Find somebody who will be there with you, who will help you along the way. Somebody that you can help along the way. But the thing is, is to go whether they listen or whether they don't, God continues to send us. And who knows, we might just have one of those moments when we meet somebody who's waiting to hear. Amen. As mentioned before this morning, we are well maybe.
maybe we're not. No, no, seriously. As mentioned earlier this morning, we are going to have a baptism. I invite the family and the sponsors to come forward at this time. Um, I also invite the children who are too small to see from where you are to come up closer. Hmm? Why don't you come over here? That way when we go to baptizer, you can... She can stand on that, okay? Y'all can come on up this way. Yeah, come up this way. <laughs> you where you can see now? God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are, uni we are united with all the baptized into one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and the love of God. Do you desire to have Charlotte baptized into Christ? Okay. As you bring Charlotte to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with her among God's faithful people. To bring her to the Word of God and the Holy Supper. To teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments. To place in her hands the Holy Scriptures. And nurture her in faith and in prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world that God has made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Charlotte grow in the Christian faith and life? Okay. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Charlotte in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? And people of God, do you promise to support Charlotte Jean Gunther and pray for her in her new life in Christ? Okay. I invite you to stand as able. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ to reject sin and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this earth that rebel against God, and the way of sin that draw us from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, he, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, living in the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? In the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters by the word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By baptism into Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of the living word, on all those who are washed in the waters of baptism that they may be given new life. 
To you be given honor and praise through our Lord Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Yeah, you can hold that. Hello. Hi there. You gonna let me hold you? Okay. You ready? Yeah, okay. Aubrey, you gonna help me with this? Okay. Here we go, Aubrey. Put your hand down here. Put your hand down here. We're gonna put it on her hand. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. Here, you gonna help me? You want Daddy to help you? Want Daddy to help you? No? Okay, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. All right. Enough water, huh? All right. All right. All right. I think you cried like that. Eh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Charlotte. Hey, hey. Okay. Charlotte. Here comes your tattoo. You have been sealed by the cross of Christ. Oh, oh. <laughs> by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Okay. <laughs> ben, if you would take her candle and go light it for me. <gasps> now you better. Oh, I'm not going to wait you anymore. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. We give you this candle to remember her baptism by. On her baptismal birthday each year, we invite you to take it out and to light it and to remind her of the day that she became a part of God's family. Let us welcome the newly baptized. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to stand and share that peace with those around you. God's peace. Here, you want to hold Charlotte thing? God's peace. God's peace. Mm. Mm. Thank you. In God's peace. God's peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now.
We continue with the prayers of intercession. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim your people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy, for all of the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery and corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of compassion, you become vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with, solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and to serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move to us toward freedom. Thank you for all who work for human rights, community organizers, and those who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. You may be seated for the offering. pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us, yes, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in the feeding of the world with your love for us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet for all is now prepared. Bye. 
understand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us in all, all need and give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. In the way of birthdays and anniversaries this week, I don't show any anniversaries, but the people who have birthdays are Nancy Hummer on the 6th, Amy Heyer on the 8th, and Troy Wishkirken on the 8th. He's looking at me like, hmm? <laughs> so, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Troy. Happy birthday to you. Now, Larison has one on the 12th. Do we need to sing to you two? Where is she? Huh? She's okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, there are flyers on the back table for the ice cream social. Pick them up, put them around so the people know that we're having the ice cream social. This year it will be either outside or um, as a drive. Uh, just some limited seating inside. Now, you know everybody's going to sit inside in the air conditioning. Okay. All right. I think it's nap time for a couple of our little ones. Anyway, uh, so yes, the flyers are in the back. Please pick them up and post them around. On Wednesday evening this week, we have our final Bible study on the Catechism. We are going to be discussing Holy Communion. Uh, please come out and join us for that at 7. It will be the last one until after VBS. Um, I am going to leave on Thursday. This is going to be a joyful day. I'm going to leave on Thursday and go get some little boys. I keep saying little boys. They're not little anymore. I'm going to get Christopher and Kelton, and we will be back on Friday. As uh, my kids call, call this, this is a scoot and scoop. I'm going to scoot down there, scoop them up, and come home. And then I get to keep them for three weeks, so they will be here for a while. Um, on Saturday evening, worship is at 6 o'clock. Next Sunday morning, worship is at 9 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, they, uh, Sarah and the camp directors would like to have a meeting with the camp volunteers. That includes the teenage helpers over in the, sanctuary, uh, over in the parish hall after worship. We um, are going to be able to get into the um, retreat house on the 11th. Um, so if you really need to drop your kids off on the 11th, you may do that. If you don't really need to drop them off, can you just wait and bring them Monday morning? We're going to take at 7.30? 7 to 8 is check-in for those who work on Monday mornings and just can't get them there on Monday mornings. Um, we have camp July the 12th through the 14th. The 16th at 7 a.m., we will make ice cream. On the 18th, we will have the ice cream social. On the 19th, there is a council meeting. And on the 20th, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to spend a week with the boys while they're here. Um, some other things to keep in mind. On August the 1st, we have our joint worship with the Methodists down at the, uh, Paloma. Uh, 9th through the 11th is VBS. The 15th is our worship up, August the 15th is our worship up at the retreat house. If you're interested in vol volunteering for camp, please see Cassie today. Um, I think all the other announcements you know, the school fair is the 29th of July. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Yes.
I made the benefit supply several of them. I spread it on both sides of the flyer. So you can take that and put it on the door in the way or on the glass so somebody can read it from the outside plus the inside. Okay, so there's some dual-sided ones that can go on glass so people can see them from both sides. And then there's some just regular printed on one side. Okay, so bear that in mind as you're picking up flyers. But pick, pick, pick them up, please. The double-sided ones are double -sided ones are paper clipped together. All right, good to know. Uh, seeing no other announcements, receive the blessing of the Lord. Please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Go in peace, for Christ is with you. Amen.